Hi all, today we are going to see some numericals on traveling waves. So, it is given there an overhead transmission line has a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms and a voltage wave of V is equal to 600 e to the power of minus 0.4 T minus e to the power of minus 3 is traveling along it. At a certain point, the overhead line terminates and the circuit is continued by two parallel overhead line transformer faders, each of which has a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms. The transformers are protected by a surge diverter, each of an effective impedance of 50 ohms. Assuming the relative transformer characteristic impedance to be infinite, the transformer impedance is given as infinite, what is the maximum voltage? We have to calculate the maximum voltage, maximum voltage which would initially appear across the fader end of winding of each transformer. That means, you have to calculate across the fader end side of a transformer how much voltage will be impressed. In order to continue, let us try to draw the diagram or let us try to represent the data that is given. So, it is given there a transmission line is there. The transmission line is having a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms. Let us take it as Z1. So, this transmission line the impressed voltage is there V. The value of the V is given as 600 into e to the power of minus 0.4 t minus e to the power of minus t. This is my value of voltage V. So, when this is impressed after traveling some distance, it is divided into two parallel lines. So, two parallel lines are there. Again, these parallel lines also have a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms. This is just equal to bifurcated line. So, let us take the impedance of this one as Z2. Let us take this impedance as Z3. Z2, Z3 it is divided. So, now this line is both lines are connected to a transformer. So, this also connected to a transformer, this also connected to a fader transformer and it is mentioned that this fader transformer is protected by lightning arrestor or there is a lightning arrestor or the surge arrestor is protected here. So, this arrestor is having a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. Let us take it as Z4, this also having a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms Z4. It is asked what is the voltage that is impressed on this transformer primary side winding and it is also mentioned that the transformer has an impedance of Z is equal to infinite. So, that means this is nothing but equal to an open circuited line. So, in this case, how to calculate the value of voltage impressed on the transformer. So, let us try to calculate one by one. So, first one will be when the wave travels at this point. So, let us keep the nodes as A. This I am keeping as node B. So, this also I am keeping as this I take, take as node C. So, now whenever the wave comes to node A, it will divide into two parts. So, how to analyze this one? We have to take the impedance per unit length or the characteristic impedance. This is nothing but equal to a bifurcated line. So, we have already seen the equivalent circuit. How to draw this one? The equivalent circuited junction A will be the voltage is coming here. That voltage I will represent by 2V. This is the Thevenin's equivalent circuit and there is an impedance Z1 of your first line and second line it is a bifurcated line. Bifurcated line means it is bifurcated into two parts. So, each one is having a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms. So, this also have a characteristic impedance of 400 ohms. So, this point is point A. So, let us see what is the voltage that is traveling from up from point A onwards or what is the voltage at node A. So, voltage at node A will be equal to, it is nothing but the transmitted voltage. We have already seen the formula how to calculate this because just use this equivalent circuit and calculate the voltage at this point. This is my voltage at point A. This will be equal to V into that resistance by total resistance. What is that resistance? It is the parallel combination of 400 and 400. Agree with me? So, this will be equal to 2V that will be multiplied by, this is nothing but Z2. So, Z2 is in parallel with Z3 divided by Z1 plus Z2 is in parallel with Z3. Agree with me? So, this will be, let us take it as V only for the time sake. So, 2V into 400 in parallel with 400 will become 200. So, this will become 200 divided by 400 plus 200. So, if you calculate this, you will get it as a through by 3 times of V. This is the voltage at A. So, this voltage VA is traveling like this also and the same voltage will be traveling here. So, this voltage VA is traveling, same voltage VA is traveling like this. So, when the voltage reaches this point C, again it is having a 
one more impedance. So how to draw the impedance of this one? So this impedance I can draw like this. So again that voltage will be 2 times of Va, a current circuit will be like this. And what is the impedance? So impedance that is Z2 or Z3. Let us take the upper circuit and it is reaching node B and at the node B there is an impedance of the surge arrestor characteristic impedance that is given by 50 ohms. So I have to calculate the value of voltage at B. So voltage that is transmitted from the node B or the voltage that is appearing across the transformer primary or across the surge arrestor will be equal to 2 times of Va. This will be multiplied by that impedance. That impedance will be equal to 50 divided by 50 plus Z2 is 400. Getting this one. So Va is equal to 2 by 3 times of V. So same thing I am substituting. This will be 2 by 3 times of 2 into V into 50 divided by 450. Agree with me? So this one if you calculate, you will get this value as 0 0.148 times of V. So let us try to substitute the value of V and it is asked to calculate what is the value of the maximum value of the voltage that can come. So voltage at VB, so I am again repeating 0 0.148 times of V is coming. So you can see here out of the total voltage because of the surge arrestor, the voltage has now become equal to 0 0.148. Only 15 percentage of the voltage will come across your transformer terminal. So this is the advantage of keeping a surge arrestor. The voltage magnitude will decrease drastically at the time of at the time t is equal to 0. Getting it? So let us substitute the value of the voltage V. This will become 0 0.148 and the value of V that V is given as 600 into e to the power of minus 0.4 t minus e to the power of minus t. So it is asked to calculate what is the maximum voltage, maximum voltage. So how to calculate the maximum value at the maximum point derivative of this one because here the variable is time with respect to time it is varying. So derivative of vb with respect to time that means d by dt of vb should be equal to 0. Accordingly, I can calculate my time. You can just do the differentiation. So if you do the differentiation, you will get the value of t equating to 0, 1.53 seconds. Getting this one. So maximum voltage I can calculate from this. So maximum voltage will be equal to 0 0.148 into 600 into e to the power of minus 0.4 times of 1.53 minus e to the power of minus 1.53. So this is the value. So this will be equal to 38.3 kV. So maximum voltage that can come is only 38.3 kV. So even though the applied voltage is actually 600 volts. So that is the advantage of installing a surge arrestor. Getting this one? I hope this is clear to you. So advantage of surge arrestor. So let us take another example because this will be useful to proceed to the next topic. Why should we go for lattice diagram? So that will be clear from this topic. So again here, it is given there the ends of two long transmission lines A and C are connected by a cable B. They are connected by a cable B. So what is the equivalent of this one? So there is a line and they are connected through some cable. So this cable I can take it as this is my cable that is B. This is line A and there is one more line line B. So let us proceed further. It is given there the surge impedance of A, B and C are 500, 50 and 600 ohms. So this one is given as 500 ohms. This is given as 50 ohms and this is given as 600 ohms respectively. A rectangular voltage wave of 30 kV. So rectangular voltage wave is given here. This is having a magnitude of 30 kV. So 30 kV is travel superimposed on the transmission line A magnitude and of infinite length that means it is a rectangular wave. So now is initiated on A and travels to C. So it is traveling from transmission line A to C. Determine the first and second voltages impressed on C. First and second voltages impressed on C. So what is the meaning of this? What should I calculate? First let us try to represent them pictorially. It will be clear to you. So first one it is given as 30 kV is given here. Out of this 30 kV, some voltage will be transmitted, something will be reflected back. So some voltage will reflect back, some voltage will transmit. Let us take this voltage as E2. So when this voltage reaches this junction, some part will be reflected back, I am taking as E3 and some voltage will be transmitted further. 
so this is called as the first impressed voltage on c this is done so again this e3 whatever is reflected back that e3 will reach this junction some part will be transmitted and some part will be reflected back so let us take this value that is reflected back i am taking it as e5 so this e5 again on reaching this junction some part will be reflected back and some part will be transmitted ahead so let us assume the voltage that is transmitted ahead i am taking as e6 so this value i can take as e7 some value is reflected back so now the sum of this e6 plus because this is because of the voltage that came because of reflected voltage e3 and already voltage e4 is there so sum of this voltage plus e4 this gives my value of this second impressed voltage on c so this e6 came because of the reflected wave which is bouncing back plus already e4 is existing here the sum of these two gives my value so let us try to calculate each one so first we will start with calculation of e2 for calculating e2 you have to draw the equivalent circuit where one impedance will be taken as a line a impedance another impedance will be cable b impedance i have to calculate the value of the voltage that is traveling ahead so i am directly writing the formulas because it is already known to us so i am just repeating that one here so that it will be clear we will not get any confusion so it is given as 500 and this is 50 and this is 600 so i am calculating the value of e2 and here the voltage is given as 30 kv right so out of this some value will be traveling ahead and some value will be reflected back so again out of this e3 that is coming back e5 will be reflected back from here again out of this e5 some value will be transmitted here i need these variables remaining i am not worried i need the value of e4 e6 accordingly i can calculate my impressed voltages so let us try to calculate the value of e2 so e2 will be equal to two times of the voltage that is impressed that is 30 kv this will be multiplied by the second impedance that means where is the impedance that is going that is 50 divided by the total impedance total impedance will be 500 plus 50 that will become 550 so this will become equal to 5.45 kv so we got the value of e2 so now e2 on reaching the junction of the second one that means reaching the junction of the c this is b this is a reaching the node c some part will be transmitted and some part will be reflected back so how much will be transmitted e4 will be equal to again two times of e2 into that impedance divided by total impedance total impedance will be 600 plus 50 that is 650 so this will become equal to 2 into e2 that is 5.45 and if you multiply this you will get it as 10.06 kv this is the first one asked what is the impressed voltage at node c in the first instant this is e4 but some part is reflected back also so reflected voltage can be calculated in two ways so one way is that value of the voltage e2 multiplied by z2 minus z1 by z2 plus z1 that is one way to calculate another way to calculate is we know the total value of the voltage e transmitted voltage is equal to impressed voltage plus reflected voltage this is already known so from this i can calculate my reflected voltage will be equal to the transmitted voltage minus incident voltage using this also i can calculate everyone agree with me so this is one way to calculate so let us calculate with this method here so when you calculate using this method this e3 will be equal to the transmitted voltage is 10.06 minus what is the incident voltage incident voltage will be e2 e2 is 5.45 this will become equal to 4.61 kv you got it how to calculate this one so now e3 after returning here some part will be reflected back so that one will be e5 will be equal to this is 4.61 kv multiplied by let us solve using the second method second method will be z2 minus z1 divided by z2 plus z1 so when it is reaching this junction this will become my second impedance or the load impedance because it is reaching the load and this is from the source because actually e3 is traveling like this some part is transmitting some part is reflecting if you want to calculate e5 so e5 will be equal to e3 multiplied by z2 z2 will be now equal to or zl will be equal to 500 minus from wherever it is traveling so the impedance of that line is 50 so where wave is already traveling 500 minus 50 divided by 500 plus 50 so this one we have already derived in our previous lectures so this will be equal to 3.772 kv 
so this i am writing based on what we got the reflected voltage is equal to incident voltage multiplied by zl minus zc divided by zl plus zc zc is the characteristic impedance of the line where incident wave is traveling and zl is the load from which it is reflecting that so based on this formula i have derived this one so e5 is calculated so out of this e5 e6 will be the wave that is traveling further so e6 will be equal to 3.772 multiplied by 2 times of because 2 times of this voltage into load impedance load impedance is 600 divided by 600 plus 50 this way i can calculate so this will become equal to 6.96 kV. okay now it is asked what is the value of the second impressed voltage so it is asked the second impressed voltage second impressed voltage will be already there is a voltage e4 along with the voltage e4 e6 is added now so this will become equal to e4 plus e6 that is the total value of the voltage at that particular junction at junction number c because the wave is of infinite duration e4 is still remaining there it is not exhausted by the time so this will be equal to sum of these two that means 10.06 plus 6.96 so if you calculate this one so you will get it as 17.02 kV. So, this is my answer. So, answer is 17.02 kV. So, this is the way to calculate. So, if you want the multiple reflections after so much time, calculating in this procedure will be very complex and cumbersome. So, there comes a method called as the lattice diagram. Using lattice diagram, we can get the value of the voltage at any instant and any point of your transmission line easily at any particular time. So, this one we are going to discuss in tomorrow's class. I hope everything is clear up to now. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.